In this video, we're going to take a look at the First Southern Baptist Church of Stockton website. So we'll just get started by logging in. So you'll add slash WP dash admin to the end of the URL and it's going to take you to a login page. You will put your username and password that we've given you in right here and it will let you log in and then you'll be here at the dashboard. So basically, I'm logged in. I want to show you how to use the items that are in use on your site. So we're going to walk through the in use items in this black column over here in this dashboard. Don't really need to worry about much that's going on over here. So I'm just going to kind of walk through what's pertinent over here. And if you have questions left over, you can, of course, always reach out to us. So we'll go ahead and start with updates. This is just where the plugins and WordPress theme are located and you can update these if you want to. That's why there's this updates button, but we regularly take care of that for all of our clients. So you never have to worry about that if you don't want, if you don't want to. Um, <clears throat> posts. This is if you wanted to utilize a blog function on your site. You're not currently using that, so we're going to skip over that for now. But if you ever do want to start a blog for your site, just let us know and we can get that set up for you and then we can kind of go over this later. But again, we'll kind of skip over that for now. Up next is media. This is the media library of your site and it's just where all the pictures, MP3s of sermons, PDFs are housed. So if you do end up wanting to add captions to some of your images, this is where you would do that. You can I can show you another place to do it, but this is one place where it can be done. So if I want to add new media, I'll click add new here or add new here and it'll give me a little box where I can drag and drop my files or I can click select files and it's going to give me the option to to select them. So if I go back to the library over here and I click on this picture, then it's going to pull up the picture for me. And from here, I can edit the photo if I want to. So if I scroll down here, I can click edit image. It's going to take me to a, an option where I can crop, rotate, all of those different things. So that can actually be done on the site. Once you make any changes, you'll just want to be sure to click update. And you can also edit the caption here. So here's the caption box here. It was also on the last page. So you don't necessarily have to click edit. You can just click the image and scroll down and it will let you add the caption. So you can type anything you want in here and you'll just need to click update. So again, that's under caption on the image here. And then that'll populate the image with a caption. Up next is forms. We have one form in place on your site, I believe, and it's a contact form. And I think this can just be deleted. So we just want to look at this contact form. This is in use on the home page on your site. I'm going to open another tab so we can take a look at it. And it's going to be this form down here. So it's basically just these three fields, name, email, and message. You can see that here. If I want to add any additional fields, all I would have to do is grab these items and drag them where I want them to go. So the fields are pretty... intuitive so it'll tell you name date time phone number we don't need to do pricing we can do a single line of text radio buttons all these different kinds of things i can drag them wherever i want them to go within this form then to edit them you'll click on whichever field you're looking at and it's going to say field label and that's where i can change out the field label and the appearance, I don't think you'd really change much at all. You'll probably just change out this label. If you want to just duplicate a field, that can be done by clicking duplicate. I can click settings here or I can delete this field. This allows me to drag the field wherever I want it to go. And so let's say if you wanted to ever create a new form for like a VBS or some sort of function, you would just go to forms, new form. And it will ask you for a title. And then you can start adding your fields from over here. So I don't know why this blank space is here, but you can see the different drop downs. So if I want to edit this where it says untitled, I would just click here and write name. If I want to edit this, I can change this to say whatever I want. And 
then you would just click update. You can also click preview if you want to see a preview of your form. You do have to click save before you do that. So you have to click update. And then it'll show you a preview. It obviously won't show you exactly how it looks on the site. It doesn't really carry over this, the styling of the site. But then you could just add all the different kinds of fields that you want. So for something like radio buttons, if I click on this, then these are my choices. And I can add or subtract. I can add them in bulk by just typing them here. And you can see that's how radio buttons works. So we've got field settings and add fields. If I want to go back to add another field or if I want to work on the settings for a particular field, that's where I kind of toggle back and forth between that. So that's kind of how drop down would work. You'd have to add choices again for that. So that would be under general here. Same idea. So you can kind of see how that works. So then you've got settings and entries. So I can view the entries for this particular form or I can view the settings for this form here. So I'm actually going to go back to the forms page over here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because we don't need it. But you can see that it can be duplicated. And it also appears in this trash folder. So if we ever want to bring it back, it can be brought back. Under contact form, this is the form we were just looking at. So I want to take a look at the settings really quick just so you can see. Um, nothing we really need to look at here. We just want to look at notifications. So also that can be clicked on through here. And then you can see that the notification is going to this email address. So every time this form is filled out, it's going to go to this email address. And that's in the send to field. Then the from field needs to have a URL with the same URL or an email with the same URL as your site. So we usually just do no reply. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be a real email address, but it does need to come from something from the same URL or Occasionally it has problems delivering. So what I like to mention for people is just to look at the form that was already created. So if you're going to go in and create a new form, you can either duplicate this form that's already here or just look at the settings and just kind of do the same exact settings. Then if you click entries here, it's going to take you to the entries on the form and you can view them here. You can also export all the settings here. So if I go to import export, then I can select a form, I can select whichever fields I want to export, and then I can select the dates I want to export and download an export file. So that's a, a general overview of Gravity Forms. Um, when you add that into a page, I'll show you how it's added in just a moment, but this is where you would actually do the editing for the form. So we'll move on to pages. This is going to be where all the internal pages of your site are located as well as the home page of your site. So let's go ahead and start with the home page. And if you look at the home page, you can kind of notice how it's broken up into sections. So we have this header that appears on every single page of the site, even the internal pages. So this isn't going to be edited on the home page because it's actually everywhere on the site. Then you've got this section, you've got this section, you've got the join us on Sunday section, and then the footer. And again, this is on every single page of your site, so it's not going to be on the home page. So let's go ahead and take a look at home page. You can see the permalink here is just the URL for the site, and then home page is the title of it so that you know that it's the home page. So for the first section, we've got these home page buttons. So home page buttons are, it's just a short code that's allowing these buttons to populate the home page. So these are actually going to be edited under home page buttons over here, and we're going to talk about them in a bit. So you can see when there's short code like this, whatever this is actually populating on the site is not going to be edited right here. It's going to be edited somewhere else over here through a different plugin. So we'll go ahead and just skip that for now because there's nothing to edit there. So then you'll see these different collapsible sections and these are the different sections for the site. So here this is the join us on Sunday section. Again you can see this first section up here and then the join us on Sunday. This is basically going to function like a word document or like any sort of word processor and you can update and edit the the 
times here in any way that you need or like. And it's just got a white background, so there's not any much editing to be done there. So that is pretty much everything on the home page. Everything else is going to be located on internal pages. If you make any changes, you'll click update. The uh, very top part of the page is edited through here, so you can see that the featured image if I click on it, it'll let me upload a new image or choose a different one from the media library. It's kind of taking a minute to load here. Basically, it's just going to pull up all my images and I can set the feature, click set featured image and it will change out this image that appears at the top right here if you ever want to change that out. So there we go. So I can select any image from the site and set it as that featured image. Some are not going to work well there. So that's something you can mess around with if you want, but just know some are not going to look good in that spot. So you've just got to make sure it's the right size, that it's a horizontally oriented photo, those kinds of things. Then you've got this content that populates the top part of the site as well. This can be edited through this header content section at the very bottom, which is a little counterintuitive, but if you just look for what the copy that you're looking for it'll be right here so this can be edited again just like anything above you can bold italicize change the size of the type or just i mean you can leave it as is if you like the way that it looks and that's everything there so again if you make any changes you'll click update so let's go back to the other pages i want to make sure i talk about what's going on in some of these other pages just so that we don't run into any confusion. So for this meet our pastor page, it's going to function much the same way as the the home page. So you'll see that there's a featured image at the top. Again, it's the same idea. Oops. I didn't mean to click that. The same image at the top like at the top on the home page is right here. So that can be changed out any way that you would like. Then you just have one section for this page. We just have this one section, which is for the pastor. Again, this can be edited just like a Word document. So you can see this image has a caption underneath it. So if I were to click on this image, it's going to say I can either align it right, center, or left. I can edit it. I can change the size. I can make it bigger. I can give it a different caption. And so this copy is going to, I can, you know, change the size of it. I can, obviously you don't want to, you wouldn't want to do this, but you can change it to make it different sizes if you want to make different headings or put it back to paragraph. I can bold, italicize. I can bullet a list. I can number a list. Obviously we don't want to do that. I can align it left, right, center. I can hyperlink any text and paste a URL here. Obviously, we want to remove that because we don't want to save that. But that's how this is hyperlinked. So it's just got the hyperlink for the email and it'll say mail to with an ellipsis. And that's everything for that page. Again, if you make any updates, you'll just click update. Let's see if there are any other things we should talk about. I think the what we believe page is similar. You've got that featured image and you've got just some copy here. So we'll take a look at it really quick don't want to save our changes. So what we believe, again, this can be edited however you would like. Let's say you want to add an additional section to any of these internal pages. That can be done by clicking this plus symbol here and it's going to give me another row. So let's say I want to make this large text I want to center everything. And I want to make a button. So let's go ahead and center this. We want to make this a button. So that's under formats. We want to hyperlink it. So I'm just going to put a, something random there. And I'd like to put some color in the background of this section. So let's say in the background, I want to change this color to something blue. So let's click update and see how that looks. A 
Oops, it's taking a while. I can see this spinny wheel. Let's refresh again. And so you can see we've created a new section. And if I click this, it's going to take me to Google. So I can kind of go back and play around with this. How do I want it to look? Well, I kind of want this to be white text too. So let's make this white text. Let's go back to the background and let's say, I want to make it, let's do a picture in the background. So if you select background image, I can add any image in the background here. That's a nice one, so let's do that. And then I want to make it, I want this color to be kind of like an overlay. So I'm going to make it a little bit opaque so that we can see through it. And let's see what that looks like. Not sure why my internet is going quite so slow. And there you go. So you can see how you've got a little bit of content there. So let's say I want to make two new sections. I want to add another section. These can also be dragged and reordered however you want. So let's say I'm going to make these. I want to make these 50%. So you can see that width of page, sec page section 50%. I want to make this one 50% too so that they can be each take up half of the page. So let's say we want to set this like this. Let's say we want to add a picture. Let's choose this one and we want to do a caption. And we want to center it. All right, let's see how that looks. See if it looks any good. It's probably not, but I'm just kind of doing this to just show how you would add things like this. So there you go. This can be done on any page. This can be done on the home page. It can be done on any internal page. And then you get to have sections that are a little bit to break up the content a little bit if you want to, if you want to add additional copy contents. Um, and then you can make them, you can make the sections extra tall, extra short, extra narrow. You can play around with any of these these spacing options and kind of just do what I did where you have two tabs open on either side and you just kind of make sure it looks okay from your end. Obviously this doesn't look great so we're going to delete both of those sections because we don't really want them on the site. But before I do that I think one other thing I wanted to show you was how to add the form. So if you do create a form the option to add the form is right here and you'll click select a form You'll pick the one you want. You don't need to display the title or the description and click add form. And I'm going to click update and we'll see that it's going to appear on this page. So there's your form. Obviously, again, this doesn't look good. I'm just kind of doing this to show you how you add things. And so this form is the same form that's on the uh, footer of the site but that's how you would add it is just through those buttons so i'm going to go ahead and remove this row i'm going to remove this row and i'm going to click update so that this page can go back to the way that it was so to go back to the pages Let's take a look at the gallery page because I do know that you've been updating and adding images to this page. So these are images from your media library. So basically I'm going to click on this media library. This little pencil is going to allow me to edit it. From here I can add captions. I can drag and rearrange these photos any way that I want. I can change the columns to make it more or less. I can change the size of the image to make them more or less, larger or smaller. I can add to the gallery and upload files here. Or I can create a whole new gallery. So if you want to create, you know, a separate gallery for different events, let's say you want to add a, a totally new gallery for a different event.
I would go to add media, create gallery, and I would from here either upload the files or choose what's already here. So I can hold shift and select all of these, create a new gallery, and again, you would add the captions here. I can make them whatever size I want, I can make them whatever, however many columns I want, and we want them to link to the media file so that people can click on them. So, then you can break them up with these different headers, or you can break them up by making those page sections like I showed you in the last section. So I could put a new gallery here and then make the, maybe make the background gray or something, if that's what you would like to do so that you can continue adding and adding more information. So I know you also had mentioned wanting to add videos to to the site. So if you do wanna end up adding videos, if you go to YouTube, I, I just have our YouTube page pulled up here. And if you click on whatever video you're wanting to upload, then you'll click share, embed, and you'll grab this code here. And you're going to copy it. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to come to my, visual, my, my editor here and you can see there's two tabs here, visual and text. Under the text side of the editor is where I'm going to paste this and that's where you can see the video coming, coming up here. Same thing works for Facebook videos. I have your Facebook page here and it should work for this video let's see okay so again we'll click share and click embed it's going to give us a code we'll copy it we want to put it in the text side of the editor and that video is going to pop up there again these can be put in 50 percent sections you can make page sections you can add you can add it however you would like what I would suggest is if this is going to be an ongoing thing where you want to keep adding videos, I would suggest one of two things or both of these things. An easy way to do this would be to create a, a YouTube channel or a YouTube page where you upload videos. So I don't know if you've got event videos that you want to add, whatever you're thinking. You can just upload them there and we can set up a feed where it auto populates all the videos from that YouTube channel. Same is true for your Facebook. If you want to add Facebook updates, Facebook videos, Facebook posts, we can also create a feed that is a whole page on your site that auto populates all the posts that you post on your social media. So again, you can do it this way, manually. Share and get the embed code, copy and paste that into this text side of the editor here. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. And again, you can put it in 50% sections. You can add copy beneath it to caption the videos, whatever you want to do. That's that's totally fine. And again, you can add, add color here, but it's just the option of if you want to create a feed. So I'm not going to save any of my changes on that page just because we don't we don't want to update that so let's just make sure I didn't edit anything yeah so it looks about the same so there you go there's where those pictures are located and sermons is also not going to be edited here it's going to be edited further down so I'm not going to go into sermons here activities I don't know Calendar is, so activities just has the same idea. It's got these media galleries. And then the calendar page is also not edited through pages. It looks like this page maybe isn't in use. So that's pretty much everything for pages. If there's something that you run into that you don't know or understand, just reach out and we'll help you. So we're going to skip over comments. You don't have comments enabled because you don't have any po posts like blogs or anything on the site. Up next is sermons. This is going to be how you add sermons to your site. It's pretty intuitive. So I can also edit them once they're uploaded through here. So I can click add new. It's going to be kind of like when you add 
media. So I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to scroll down here. I can add the date that it was preached. And I can put the Bible passage. I can put a description. You can add a sermon image. You can add what series it was in, what preachers preached it. You can add as much or as little as you want. The only thing you need is a title and this location of MP3. And again, you'll click in here, upload your files, select the MP3, and use this file. And that's really all you need. You can attach sermon notes. So you can upload PDFs here if you want to put the sermon notes. And again, you can add a sermon image just like we added those featured images on the other pages. And then you would just click publish. So if I, if I want to edit this one that's already up, I can click here, a city in uproar. I put the date, put the Bible passage, and then I put that location of MP3 through clicking this button and selecting this MP3. Again, that's uploaded the same way you upload media. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you edit that. If you ever, I think they should just be in the correct order, but if they ever get out of order, you can use this reorder section here. And if that doesn't work, just let us know. And yeah, you'll just click add new and add those here. And like I said, it's pretty intuitive and that'll get you all set up on this sermons page here. Again, you can add series, topic, books, you can add all that if you want. And we just added this video to the Facebook page because you can add videos and you can do Facebook feeds, but the a lot of times sermon videos get flagged in, inappropriately, just not for inappropriate content, but rather they are flagged and for content and they they won't they won't embed correctly. So that's why we don't do that for sermons, even though um, there's nothing wrong with the video. Sometimes they just get flagged. And there's nothing we can do about it because Facebook doesn't really seem to care too much about whether something is wrongly flagged or not. So moving on, we've got Foo Gallery here. This is another way to set up galleries. If you want to mess around with this, you're more than welcome to. It's just another way to make galleries of images on your site, but it's not currently in use. So we'll move to homepage buttons. Just a reminder, this is what sets up those buttons on the homepage that we kind of skipped over in the homepage section because they're edited through here. So I'll just click on one. It's kind of the same idea as the sermons. It's got a title. It's got a little bit of text here. And then there's a link to where the page will be located. So if you want to add a new page, you can click add new page. And it's going to well first there we go. It'll give you a permalink right here and then you can copy and paste that and put it in the button. Then you'll click add element, page group, add page section. It's a lot of clicking to get here, but that's how you add new pages. So again, add element, page group, add page section. So we don't want to save that page, but again, the permalink is up here. So you can copy and paste that, come back to home page buttons. And if you want to add a new button, it's probably going to get a little bit crowded up here. But if you wanted to replace one that's already here, then you would just rename it, give it a new sub bio kind of thing here. Click and get a new, you'd have to grab a graphic from somewhere, but you can get a new graphic and then paste that URL here click update if you make any changes. So we'll keep moving on. Um, under WP Bruiser, that is, this is just something we set up to keep spam out of your forms. Nothing you need to do here. Genesis is just the theme on your site. Nothing you need to do here. Under appearance, there's a couple items we want to look at here. Widgets and menus. Under widgets, This is where your header and footer content is located. So in the header, you've got your logo here, which links to the home page. And then we've got our navigation menu, but our menu is actually going to be added or edited elsewhere. Then in the before header, there's a second menu for the social media items. Again, that'll be edited elsewhere. Then we have the footer. This has your map and the location and the form. So if you ever want to edit this copy, it can be edited right here in the footer section. And if you make any edits, you'll just want to make sure you click save. 
But that's pretty much it for widgets. Then we go to menus, and this is where you'll edit those menus on your site. So looks like we have two, the main and the social. Let's just start with the social because that's pretty simple. It's going to be this up here. So you've got your telephone number and your Facebook. If any of those things change, you can just change out the phone number here. You can see where the numbers are and you can just change that out. And if you want to add any additional social media, you would just copy what you see here and then click Save Menu. Under Main Menu, we'll go to this one instead and look at this. You can see the hierarchy of menu and how this is set up. So if I create any new pages, like I just showed you how to add a new page, it's going to show up over here and I'll just click the item I'm looking at and click add to menu and then I can drag this wherever I want it to go. So it can be a sub menu item, it can go anywhere I'd like, I can click on it and change the label, I can remove it or I can even link to some place that is outside of the site. So I can put any URL I want here and then the label would go here and you would just click add to menu. And again, these can be, the label can be edited, I can delete, I can remove them, or I can drag and rearrange them however I want. So again, the page is going to show up here, but if you can't find it, you can either search for it or you can just do a custom link and copy that and paste that permalink right here and click add to menu. Again, you make any changes, you just want to click save. Moving down, plugins are what's used to build your site. If you want to add new plugins and play around with those, you're more than welcome to. If you run into issues with that or have questions about that, please let us know. Under users, this is where you're able to edit your admin username. So I can, you can click here. And if I click on here, it's going to show our megaphone password. So I'm not going to click on anything. I'm just going to describe it to you. Unfortunately, when I'm logged in under our admin account, it shows my password. So I'm not going to click on anything. Basically, all you'd have to do is click add new here. And you would just have to have a an email address to add. And then you would just select admin if you want to make another admin on the site. And then that person can log in at this same URL. FBC Stockton slash wp dash admin with their email and password and if you click here you can edit your password and then just click make sure you click save and then you can have whatever password you want um, instead of whatever we set it as and we can always reset that for you if we need to uh, we'll keep moving down. All of these items are kind of just things that are in use on your site that you're not really going to edit. You're probably not going to change locations anytime soon, so we won't worry about the Maps plugin. We don't have the Facebook feed set up, but like I said, if you want to set that up, you can. I think the only other thing we need to look at is my calendar here so that we can edit the events on your site. So if I want to manage my current events, I'll go here to Manage Events. And you'll be able to see the list of all the different events you have here. They can be, anytime you hover over them, I can view, copy, delete them. Trash and delete is pretty much the same thing. I think trash will keep them in a trash folder. Delete will probably delete them permanently. So if I want to just view them, I'll click here and it's going to take me to the view of the event. Or if I want to edit it, I'm going to want to click this little pencil so that I can actually edit the event. I can look at the event title and scroll down here. I can change the time and I can change the date. I can change the reoccurrence. I can add event details, any of that good stuff. And then we'll just click save if we make any edits. If I want to add a new event, I'll click add new event. I'll give it the event a title. Come down here, give it a date, give it a time from blank until blank. Is it an all day event? Do we want to hide the end time? Do we want to use a different end date so it lasts from this date to this date, like if it's a week long thing? I can add another occurrence, you can make it repeat any, you can add additional details, add a photo. Any of those types of things are going to be how you edit those events. And that should be pretty much it. But we're not using Slider Revolution on the site. And WordFence is just a protection that we have on the site. 
So that's basically everything. If you run into questions, if you run into trouble with anything, please reach out. Let us know. We'll be happy to add additional support, but hopefully this will get you started and get you to the place where you can start adding whatever you need to.